As money becomes tighter and we grow more concerned about the environment, we thought we would take some time today to share with you three tips on how you can save money and landscape your yard that is also environmentally friendly. Tip number one, do your homework. Now I know as adults we thought we were done doing homework and maybe that homework has turned more into housework. But if there's homework to be done, wouldn't you rather be in the backyard doing it? So the first thing is to know your backyard. Know the existing conditions. Know whether you have trees or full sun. Know what your soil conditions are like. And also whether you already have native plants or you have other plants in your landscape. Know about those as well. By knowing those things, you will help save yourself money and potential failures as you go forward. For example, if you know in your backyard that you have no shade, whether that's from a pergola or a tree, when you're looking for landscape plants, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're purchasing things that require full sun. Anything otherwise will possibly lead to failure, which is an added expense if you have to pay for plants that just die. We want you to succeed. So looking for plants that can tolerate your existing conditions in your backyard is important. Also know your zone. What zone are you in? When you're going to the nursery to look at that plant label, make sure that it is going to live within that zone. And finally, if you haven't done a soil sample, make sure you do one so that you can know the soil conditions. Again, certain plants require certain conditions. The other homework you need to do is know your pests. Know whether you have bugs in your backyard and not all insects are bad insects. So kind of know about which ones are the good ones and which ones are the bad ones. In fact, there are a lot of beneficial insects. For example, lady beetles. We all know that lady beetles take care of a lot of our aphid problems in our garden. But do you recognize the larva of the lady beetle? It's the larva that's actually going to take care of more of those aphids than the adult is. Therefore, it's important to know the different stages of those insects as well so that you can recognize them regardless of their age. The last thing that you need to do your homework on is your labels. And I'm not talking about your plant labels just yet. I'm talking about any pesticide labels. If you have decided that you need to take care of a pest using a pesticide, whether that's organic or inorganic, you want to make sure that you've read that label. The label is the law. And you'll find on there specifications for the rate at which you should apply. And that's really important to follow those specifications. A lot of times people think more is better and that is not the case. A lot of research has gone into those specific ratios and measurements that you should use for application. If you under apply, you're just spending your money on that product and it's not gonna be effective for taking care of the pests. If you over apply, you're spending too much money on that product and you're also introducing additional pollutant into the environment. And of course, with all pesticides, we wanna make sure that we've stored them properly away from pets and children. Tip number two. Think about the right plant for the right location. Now, I know we often say that, but it also means thinking about the right plant for the right location for you. So when we're looking at plants that start grabbing your attention, make sure that we're not including any invasive species. There are a lot of native species, in fact, that do well in both sun and shade conditions. Also, you wanna make sure that when you start seeing some of those plants that really grab your attention, that you're looking at the ultimate height and the width of those plants so that when we plant them in the garden, we know that they're gonna have all of the room to really grow and develop. When you're looking at those plant requirements, while it might be the right plant for the right location, you still also have to look as to whether it's the right plant for you. And this is where you've gotta be honest with yourself and the level of maintenance you're gonna to give to your garden. Anybody can hire somebody to come in and install a beautiful landscape, but even that is going to need maintenance. So you need to be honest with how much time you're gonna put in your garden or whether you're gonna hire somebody to do that maintenance on your garden. Now the plants you choose can influence that maintenance. If you're looking for something that you don't have to plant every year, you're gonna to wanna to lean towards planting more perennials that will return year after year. If you want something that is a little bit more informal looking so you don't have to trim as many hedges, make sure you go with that more natural look. And then finally, if you're wanting something that is a little more drought tolerant, that'll help you from having to lug around those hoses. Tip number three, keep conservation in mind. Often in the summertime, we start to see our water bill going up 
And so a couple of things that you can do to help reduce that water bill is to zone your irrigation. Whether you have something that's a drought tolerant garden or a traditional lawn, you want to make sure to water them separately. Often our turf grass or our lawn needs a lot more water than some of our traditional landscapes. You can also reduce the lawn space and incorporate more drought tolerant plants if that's what you want to do. Another thing you want to maybe try to look at is installing drip irrigation. That ensures that the water is getting right to the base of the plant and you're not losing it to evaporation. And speaking of evaporation, you also want to make sure to install mulch if possible. Putting a nice barrier of mulch two to three inches down around your plants will reduce the amount of evaporation from those plants up into the air. Also, when it comes time to watering, you want to make sure that you're watering deeply and less frequently through that soil profile. That will ensure that those roots are growing deeper, which will allow them to maintain themselves longer between watering periods. The other thing you might want to think about is going a little more native or natural. So by incorporating more native plants, that doesn't mean it's going to be this wild overgrown lawn, but it will be plants that are more suitable for your environment, such as the ones that we have here behind us. By incorporating native plants, you're going to notice that you have a lot more wildlife that comes into your backyard, which adds a whole nother dynamic dimension to your landscape. It's not just about a pretty aesthetics, but it's also about a habitat for that wildlife. Finally, the last thing that you want to think about is recycling. And in the garden or the landscape, that means compost. So throughout the season, we often have a lot of plant debris that comes out of the garden. Instead of putting that in your trash can or paying to have that hauled away to a landfill, make sure that you're putting that into a compost where it will decompose and then you can reincorporate it into your garden soil. That means less fertilizer and healthier plants later on. So there you have it, three simple tips on how to save money while helping the environment. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.